I'm Amy Sidron, um, and this is the Fort Vancouver High School Garden. So this classroom, basically, um, the outdoor classroom involves the horticulture students and natural resource students. So I'll just walk around and give you a tour of what we're growing. We decided to grow pole beans or dry beans, and they're heirloom. They're from all over the world. You can kind of see that there's some starting to come in, and we'll wait till they're dry, and then the students will harvest them, and I think we're going to make different kinds of soup mixes, do like little jars, and kind of come up with some soup mixes so students can see where the beans come from and that there's not just black beans out there. There's a lot of cultural diversity with where they come from and then diversity within the beans and the colors themselves. So, yeah, Because food tells a story and that's a big part of what I am personally interested in and what my students are interested in because there's about 34 languages spoken at Fort. Um, so part of the garden is talking about history of food, culture of food, where it comes from, um, what it means to different cultures, what it means to grow food and harvest it, and, and also gardening. Part of gardening is how people grow food and that has a lot to do with their culture and where they're from. So it's really a big tie-in for me is food and culture and how that kind of creates classroom community as well. And over here we have carrots. So those will also be harvested in the fall. And then we have beets and turnips, which are really good root crops. And again, students can harvest those in the fall. And then we have three sisters is next to that, which is corn, beans, and squash. It's a traditional way to grow um, the three varieties of plants, basically, because the beans support, or the beans will grow on the corn, and then the squash will go on the ground, and that's a traditional Native American, but also northern Mexico crop, and a lot of students are familiar with that, so we do that as well. And then more beans over there. Um, raspberries, which are great because the students in the, fall, in the spring will come out and just go crazy because they're basically ready early June. And so they come outside and just pick a ton of raspberries and get really excited about the garden, even though it's the end of the year. But students do plant a lot of this stuff, so most of my students um, were involved in planting the beans, and then there's actually squash growing underneath, little mini pumpkins and things that they'll harvest in the fall. And then they planted pretty much everything else. A lot of the stuff is from donations, so seeds, we get donations from different um, nurseries or um, even people. They'll just kind of drop by with different seeds and stuff for us to grow, and plants sometimes soon. Also, the raspberries started out with a donation of like 15 plants, and now we have, behind this tunnel, we have um, three 50-foot beds of raspberries. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. And then we have onions and amaranth. Amaranth is a traditional grain to South America, and one year we had a whole bed that was just traditional grains of the world. So we had quinoa, amaranth, wheat, barley, rye, oats. Um, we had some garbanzos, which are used for flour and Mexican cooking. So we just had all different kinds of stuff. And then our new beds, we, um, we just took out all the garlic. And so that's inside drying. And most of the garlic we've been growing for a few years, but one variety is Korean and from a student um, whose mom brought it over from South Korea. So we've been growing that for a couple years and saving seed and then we'll braid it and we'll sell it and we also provide food for culinary arts so we grow a lot of lettuce and greens um, and we're hoping this year to have a weekly market where we actually sell lettuce or you know greens or something every week to the um, staff because they're super interested in supporting us so yeah and then over here we have kale and brussels sprouts cabbage and then sunflowers to attract pollinators I'm just kind of giving students an idea of what things actually look like when they grow because a lot of them a lot of them are really familiar with plants and then some of them have no idea what, you know, what the form is that plants actually grow in or how they flower. So we have lettuce kind of growing in the middle of this bed and students don't realize that um, plants produce seeds. The lettuce actually flowers and produces seeds and um, that's something really, not, really good for them to understand. So, then kale, and then we have little mini pumpkins over here that are just growing. And these tunnels, they're called high tunnels, and we were able to do that, basically build these with my advanced class through a, um, through a grant with the food bank called Hoops for Hopes. We had leftover money because we built tunnels at the food bank at 78th Street. And so with these tunnels, we can control the temperature and actually change our zone by two separate areas so we can grow all year round. So we've got melons and peppers and tomatoes in there right now, and then um, we'll probably be planting the next couple weeks lettuce and carrots and things like that that we can kind of keep going throughout the season. And then they actually close up so we can keep this really warm throughout the year. And this is one of my students, <laughs> David. 
pulling out all the peas so that we can put new a new crop in there. And then we moved a lot of our stuff, so now we have three 50-foot beds of raspberries that will keep growing. And then there's potatoes, and then there's fruit trees kind of ringing the garden, along with grapes. Um, yeah. And then we have our compost piles behind us where students learn about waste and how things break down. You have to do lessons on worm bins and compost and nutrients and how to put nutrients back in the soil. So, yeah. Other things I should hit on? Yeah, I'm really lucky I get to have students take a year of Hort and then they get to come into the advanced class and they can actually keep taking it. And then mm -hmm. so I have two students this year, two girls, that'll basically be running the garden. And the wow. Like that, so, yeah. Yeah, it's good leadership mm -hmm. opportunity. It, it is. is. And one of them I hired this summer and I get to pay her for 20 hours. So wow. interesting. And there's a lot of opportunities out there for agriculture and for farming right now. We partner with Clackamas Community College and we um, are able to articulate our class with six college credits. Oh, wow. So if they sign up for it, it's up to them. They have to right. pursue it. You know, I, I can help them. But it's such a great opportunity because they transfer anywhere and it counts as an elective credit. Mm -hmm. So they get those credits. Um, and I actually had one student who we do a competition at Clackamas and she won, I think, a full semester. So she got a full semester of credits free, for free through this, oh my gosh. Through this, basically this test that she took about plants and soil. And then she also has six credits on top of that, so she almost has a year for free. Wow. Yeah, and she will go there. She wants to study agriculture and do um, some sort of nursery or farming. So, Mackenzie? Yep. Yeah, she's super right. into it. So there's definitely a lot of area to, to go and pursue. And then our culinary is really interesting. We grow a lot of herbs for them. So they come out here a lot and we'll harvest stuff. And they teach a lot about how food is fresh and where it comes from. And then a lot of my students are culinary students, and so there's kind of a lot of back and forth. That's really fun. I think about five years ago, I was already teaching here, and I was in the portable, and they said the horticulture program was going to come back, because nobody had been using, it was just the front greenhouse at that point, oh, okay. and so they said it was going to come back, and so then I just happened to be in the right place in the right time, and this is why I taught, because I had been an organic farmer for about six years, and really wanted to tie in what I loved into the classroom, and I was teaching things that I wasn't very interested in, and then all of a sudden it came back, and so this was just grass. There were four or five really big trees out here, and I had them taken out, and basically tilled up sections at a time um, and then basically put this in over the last five years. Wow. Yeah. Ew, yeah. Okay. If they want to take stuff home, they can definitely take stuff home. Like I was saying in the spring, they would come out with plastic bags and just fill them up with raspberries. Mm -hmm. And then we have salad greens and they can take those home. And hopefully in the fall, the tomatoes will be in and we'll make salsa in the classroom. And we'll talk about that. And then, you know, anything else, the kids are always able to take things home. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of them are, are really into it because it kind of goes back to where their families are from. A lot of our students are Russian or you know, Ukrainian or from that kind of central, that area of, I guess it's kind of Central Asia. And then um, they don't have those anymore because a lot of them live in apartments or houses where they don't have gardens. And so they get really excited and talk about it a lot. And same with a lot of my Asian students as well. They had gardens when they were over there, but now live in apartments. And so it's a really nice opportunity for them just to be outside and kind of, even if they're not working a lot out here, they can still just be in the garden and of remembering and telling stories about it and that's a really fun part for me because I love hearing about what they were doing and what they were growing and my goal eventually is I'd love to have more um, like cultural foods growing like beds that are from China or beds that are from you know Russia or things like that but I just haven't really gotten there yet there's a lot of other things to do so yeah we hope to have a fall festival this year where we have parents and community and people kind of come and celebrate the fall and the harvest and it's one of the reasons why we did a lot of the fall stuff so that they could see what's going on and kind of be involved with that.